What's up, everyone? I'm Scott. And I'm Jason. And you are listening to Liquid Carnage, my friend. Uh, Vegas experience. You're there. I just left there. Two very different experiences. Yeah, well, um, I guess in honor of, uh, of Janice, um, hollow from the other side. Yeah. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I got Hello, to... it's me. <laughs> right. Wow, I got sorry, to spend the weekend was... in Vegas uh, because Janice and a friend of ours uh, got to go see Adele a Saturday evening. So uh, our friend's husband, Brian, Brian's been on the show before. Brian and I got to uh, spend an evening with five children in the Luxor uh, while they went to the, to the Adele concert at the Caesars Forum. Um, so they had a wonderful time. And I, f- I now found out what being old in Vegas is like where you're stuck to a room and you can't go anywhere because you can't trust children in casinos. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I would imagine that you can't let five little kids run around. It would be too much, too much, too much. Yeah. Um, in fairness, though, they, they did think the Luxor, which is, is one of the more modestly priced hotels in, in on, the strip. on the Strip, yeah, um, was super luxurious because the water faucets were gold. Oh. And there was a window between the shower and the bathtub, so people could talk to each other. So, oh gosh, <laughs> yeah the the uh, the expectations at that age are probably like, wow, we're just not in our normal rooms. We're in we're in like luxury. <laughs> yeah, yeah ex- exactly, exactly. So you know, the, the kids had fun. That's the important thing. Because yeah, we um, um we uh, Noreen is having a conference uh, this week, and so um. You know, because of my job, I have a little bit more flexibility to travel and work from, Mm -hmm. you know, wherever I'm in. Well, her company, um, when they do it, they don't mess around. I mean, they got, we have a a room at the Wynn, um, very nice hotel room that has like a beautiful view of, of of the strip. And so I'm looking at all the poor people and I'm thinking, wow, you guys are losers. Um, and, um, and so, you know, we, we're, we're getting that experience now we don't have kids. So obviously that changes that, that, that changes had, things too if yeah. we had kids then they would be you know putting their their sticky hands all over the mirror and it would obstruct the view and so you know yeah yeah you know it's, so you know it's a totally different experience but hey tomato tomato, tomato. what's the yeah. difference and, and i will openly admit vegas as an adult when you're bringing children is a very different story than uh vegas but like the time we went to garth brooks many years ago um where we had a great time that night uh, yeah. Out and about. Yeah, this is, it's a very different story, you know, story this time. For for me, we took them to the M&M store, an M&M factory, just to get them out of the room for a little while. And I learned a very valuable lesson on the price per pound for chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think everything in Vegas is more expensive. I mean, it is pretty ridiculous, well, some of the prices. You um, know, they, they are. Everything's ridiculous. And that M&M store, they had like these three. They're basically the amount of m&ms in a bag but they put it in this like little collector's tin and it was three for 45 bucks oh. <laughs> so janice was gonna get them and and i said no if we're gonna get them m&ms there's all the colors on like the dispenser you just fill the bag up and half a pound is nine bucks so let's just let's just do this instead because they'll get way more candy and it's going to cost us a fraction of the price. Yeah, but Scott, don't you think at some point you need to just say, you know, the enjoyment and the specialness of buying the $15 tin is, is worth paying the extra six bucks? Well, well, you got, they got, you got to expand well, yourself, pick, man. But when they got to pick their colors of the M&Ms they wanted, mm-hmm. uh, that the tin was out the door. I see. So the color, the, the rainbow made yeah. it that much better you, okay. you got to customize got your colors so what i thought would be a 10 to 15 dollar purchase was 45 as well because two and a half pounds of m&ms uh, later goes very fast well and i've always wondered about you with vegas because you're not a gambler per se so no. so vegas um obviously a lot of what vegas means is to sit and gamble and, and you know and play a slot machine or play you know, table games or whatever. And since you don't do that, it takes away a big uh, uh, area of entertainment for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, I mean, obviously, and you don't, you don't like paying $20 for 
a, a small beer or, you know, a cocktail. So, you know, you got that going against you when you come to Vegas as well. So really I could see Vegas not being an enjoyable time at all, unless well, you're going to a concert. Know, and, and that's not entirely true. Cause I, I, I don't mind, like I understand Vegas prices for food and that's not a problem because if I'm going to certain places, it just, it's an experience. I get it. You know, it's perfectly fine. I found, uh, because we were at the Luxor, it's it's connected to Excalibur and Mandalay Bay. Excuse me. Oh yes, yes. So they have so walkways. Could, walkways, yeah. Oh, that. Would, oh, did you go to Excalibur with the kids? That yeah, we fun. walked through the Excalibur. They weren't impressed. They they oh. like Egypt better than than the the Renaissance, but they they share like their food courts all share the same company essentially. So for ten bucks, you can buy a cup you can refill all weekend for free, or you can buy a large drink for five bucks a pop. So, uh, yeah, smart thinking on your part. So got him that took care of that, you know, it, there's little things, but yeah, I, I don't mind paying Vegas prices. If we're like, if we're hanging out at a day pool or going to a concert or a nice dinner or a good breakfast, that's, that's just fine. It comes to the territory. It's you're right. It's the gambling. I don't like it's, it's, I could, I could take, I could leave that all day long. It's not for me, but there's other aspects of the strip I'm cool with. But if, if, if I stay out of the strip area and just stay in Henderson or Summerlin or, or even over by Fremont, I'm perfectly happy. Well, I will say this. Uh, uh, we had a chance to walk through the Wynn Casino last night. and We did a little bit of gambling, but the one thing that uh, Vegas has done that has definitely helped Noreen and me is uh, the minimum amount bet on the tables now mm-hmm. are so high that it, it stops me from wanting to gamble at all. Like we were walking by every blackjack table, the minimum was $50 bet. Yeah. Well, uh, you see, that's that's you also because you're staying at the Wynn, quite possibly the nicest resort on all of the Strip. Yeah, maybe. Now, had, had you been at the Gold Nugget or the Horseshoe down on Fremont, oh, you, true. you could probably yeah. do a dollar bet, and they wouldn't think, even think twice about it. Yeah, and, um, you know, nowadays, too, uh, they have machines in the casinos where you can play craps or you can play roulette or you can play blackjack, but you're playing on, like, a, a like virtual a, uh, like a slot machine kind of yeah. uh, thing. So uh, there you the minimum bet was $5. So I got to play blackjack a little bit. I mean, obviously it's not the same when, when you have the scornful eyes at the little dealer who keeps yeah. hitting 21 every time. But, you know, you, you get a little bit of enjoyment. I'm always reminded of, of the almost classic Vegas vacation with the Griswold family where yeah, you know, special Clark, casino. Yeah, Clark goes to the casino. He goes to blackjack, and it's like Griswold, you again? Why don't you give me all your money? I'll take you out back. I'll kick you in the nuts. And we'll call it a day. <laughs> Changing two hundred. <Yeah. laughs> Changing two hundred. Changing five hundred. <laughs> you know, it's just I I, I I am impressed by the amount of people that that want to gamble. Um, but I tell you, the part that impressed me the most, I think, was the amount of people gambling. At 6 a.m. in Vegas. Yeah. Because um, the way it was set up, like, like we had five kids, and they all decided they were just going to take a room. So we left five kids in a room uh, to fend for themselves, and we were in the door room right next to them so we could hear them, we could check on them. And once they passed out, they were moving. So left all the adults, all four of us in one room. And one of the people, not Janice or myself, um, forgot his CPAP machine. Oh boy! So one of the people kept everyone else up. Uh, he kept me up, and oh, <laughs> I think everyone else managed to go to sleep. So I, I was up about four thirty, five o'clock, uh, Arizona time, and I laid there until you know I, as long as I could, and I got up and I just wanted the casino floor early in Vegas, and to see the amount of people actually gambling, and not like the oh the clubs closed gamblers. It's like the old folks that are up gambling, getting a fresh start on the day. Yeah. Yeah, they want to avoid the crowds. They want and, to avoid. They want to have their special machine, and they don't want to have to fight for it. Yeah, and that part blew me away the most because I feel like if you're gambling that early in the morning, that's got to be some kind of like addiction problem. No, not necessarily. I well, how about this? I think anyone who, <laughs> anyone who um, is up that early gambling could be a, just a. a they were gambling the whole night before and they're just coming in for the night, yeah. but they don't want to stop. So I guess you're right. It could be a gambling problem or it could be just, Hey, I'm finishing up the night. I'm about ready to go up to my room. And well, if those old people I saw gambling, were just, we're just leaving the club. Then <laughs> <laughs> Clearly 
clearly I have to reevaluate how I do Vegas. Yeah. I understand that this, this trip was a, a special circumstance, but man, I have to really reevaluate it in that case. Yeah. We're up on the 54th floor of the wind. So I can, I can kind of see down the strip and it, it's amazing how many hotel rooms are crammed in this one little what, three mile, four mile section of road. It, it, yeah. I mean, there's hotel, hotel, hotel. And, you know, we're talking two, 3000 room hotels, you know, we're not talking like a, you know, a thousand or a hundred rooms or something like that. They're, they're big. So well, what really blows me away is that they're, they're right now there's to start construction on the track for the F1 race there next fall. Yes. Yeah. So there's and a it's... lot of chaos, more chaos around the strip because yeah. there's construction on Tropicana widening it for everything. And for anyone that, that doesn't know, it's the, the formula one series is having a night race, a night city race in Las Vegas in October. And it's all around the strip and down the strip. And uh, unless you're rich, you're not going to be able to get a ticket. But... Oh, um, we saw at the win, the win is selling a $1 million Formula One experience package for a million yeah. bucks. A million oh, yeah. dollars. Uh, Caesars has a $2 million package. And one of the other casinos has like an 850000 5 million, excuse me. Caesar has a $5 million package. Um, Formula One package, and then one of the other hotels has a eight hundred and fifty thousand dollar Formula One package. So, so already the the hotels are are oh well, we'll make a few million bucks on this thing. We'll make it. Work. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. You know, as if they weren't making enough money off all the UFC oh. fights, all the concerts, all the conferences, the Raiders. Um, my God, man, it's gonna get just. It's the, the, the moral of the story is avoid the central part of the strip in a vehicle if you can for the next year, because the construction is going to be chaos yeah. and you know, just walk if you can or Uber and let someone else handle it. It's, but that's, yeah. the, that's the cult of Vegas. That's well, and I, and I will say this is the first time in a very, very, very long time that we've actually been on the strip. We, we, we really confine ourselves more to the Fremont area just because, uh, you know, the walking proximity of everything and the hotels mm-hmm. are a little bit less expensive, less crowded, uh, obviously, the smaller stakes, you know, you can find a, a $5 table or a $10 table. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we usually uh, stay a lot down there. Plus, you know, with Container Park and all the, you know, the East Fremont where all those like bars and stuff are just like a, a walking. You can just that's you know, the more that's the more mortal part of Vegas. You know, that's yeah. the everyday. That's where a lot of the locals go and whatnot. And you're right. <clears throat> Fremont's a great part, a, a great part of town when you get outside the Fremont experience all the restaurants and the container park and the museums it's just fun it's worth it yeah yeah i'm with you i'm with you but like i said that's the cult of vegas i mean some people like the high roller edgy stuff because that's the vegas experience for the newbies and then the more seasoned people tend to float toward the fremont area well and how many people like the allure of this city uh, like I was even telling Noreen, I said, you know, I can't believe her conference is only like a two-day conference. And yet the amount of money and the excitement of all the people from their her company coming to this conference, I was thinking, boy, you know, some people are just devoted, blindless devotion to Las Vegas, Las Vegas. Oh, my God. Yeah, Las Vegas, but Las Vegas. You, you spent 20 years living right next to it, going to it for everything, flying out of there as your major, you know, traffic, you know, airport. You're past it to them. This is all the glitz and the glamour that everyone says it to be. The advertising works on those people because they haven't been in there, been here and seen everything that you've seen, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I like Vegas in very small doses. Um, yeah. So this has been really nice because, you know, it's all part of, you know, Noreen's, you know, work stuff. And then I'm working during the day. So it's not like I'm like, you know, drinking all day and partying. But it's just yeah. kind of nice to enjoy a little bit of class. You know, yeah, I get class. It. I get it. Now, now, before we actually get on to our subject, are you eating anywhere fun, or are you just staying no, basically we, in the wind? Uh, right now, the, the temperature has been very cold uh, uh-huh. up here in Las Vegas, so we have not stepped out onto the strip. I might go down um, this evening. She's got a dinner, so I might go down, and uh, there's uh, the Davidoff's the Scar Bar mm-hmm. down the, the, stri- the strip, and I might go down there and, and have myself a cigar possibly maybe okay. but even that i mean i'm looking it's probably like a two or three mile walk because it's you know you're only going for you know seven hotels but that's like a mile and a half so yeah. i don't know we'll see we'll, we'll see we'll see how see. it goes see how it yeah goes. we'll see how it goes but um but yeah so but no 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 fancy food um you know like you said food costs are so expensive um that it's just it makes it kind of like 
you know, like what we got two coffees and two uh, breakfast sandwiches for 58 bucks today. So, you know, wow. I'm like, uh, you know, well, I get that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, you, you, you little tin, uh, the $15 tins of M&Ms. I get it. I get yeah. you. You know, we, you. we took the kids to a place called Crepe Expectations. It's been on the Food Network for breakfast yesterday on, oh, yeah. on, on the way out. And that's one of our favorite spots to go when we're leaving Vegas because the food's always good. They get very creative with their crepes. And since it's way off the strip, it's normal priced. So four of us for 55 bucks is way better than you two for coffee and sandwiches for almost 60 yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll, we'll experience something, you know, nice. Cause we, uh, we drive back Thursday, so we'll, we'll experience something nice. So, I thought, so I thought you this, this was a two day conference. That's, well, yeah. You stay for a couple of days extra or? It, it starts, um, it starts this evening and then oh, uh, okay. Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we drive back Thursday. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. So you're making so. the most of it. Oh, why not? Yeah. You know, yeah, you I, mean, I'm, I, I mean, even this, I'm like, I'm working in it, and, but my view is outside on the strip in Las Vegas. So I figure, gosh, this is not a bad place to, you know. Yeah. That's, 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 that. so, that's not a, a bad thought. It'll work. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But, um, but uh, well, yeah. So on with the show. I mean, I think we, hell, we could probably go another 15 minutes if we wanted to on, uh, <laughs> on Vegas, but we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll try to weave everything back in. You know, it's so funny for those of you who listen to us, we do pre-production and our pre-production is, you know, what are we going to talk about? Hey, what'd you do this weekend? You know, how the kids, you know, yeah. how's Noreen? That's, that's our pre-production meeting. However, yeah. you know, we try to, we try to get down to uh, a brief introduction and then into the segue into the show. And, you know, every once in a while we get off topic, you know, yeah, so pre-production is good, but it's not, it it's happens. not etched in stone. In fairness, I did not know you were in Vegas as we were leaving Vegas. So that's just made for natural conversation. Uh, for us to start the show with yeah spent the, we got up here friday and spent a couple days with my mom because her birthday was last week so we spent a couple days with her so that was kind of nice just to hang out with her and um and uh and we didn't even we didn't even come to the strip so it just, it were it was it was living like in vegas like regular so it worked out perfect that's the way i prefer it that's the way i, yeah. prefer. So anyway, I don't, so I don't know work. what it's been going on with me but uh do you ever get into uh, a a part of your life where you just get obsessed with one topic you don't know why you get obsessed but you start reading things about it and you mm -hmm. start watching documentaries and you just start well for whatever reason i have been like fascinated with cults lately okay and um you know how they work you know how how people get you know, into a cult, how people get out of a cult, why do people go into cults? cult? And for whatever reason, I've just been just fascinated with cults lately. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I love Hulu because Hulu has really good documentaries. And one of the series that they're watching that they have, it's, it's called uh, Cults. Yeah. And, um, and so I started watching a couple episodes, you know, and, and uh, about famous cults that are going on. And I'm looking at them, and from a very rational, objective perspective, I cannot understand how someone could get into a cult. How does someone get into a cult? Because to me, it seems so painfully obvious that this, there's something wrong with this picture. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's something wrong with this picture. Um, but as you talk to the people who were in the cult, and you think, oh, okay, well, they kind of explain what's going on a little bit. and. It, it's helped me to understand a little bit more about how someone could get into it. Um, my first question to you, though, was going to be um, knowing yourself and knowing what you know about cults before we even start talking. Do you think you could ever be in a cult? Uh, no. No. I could run a cult. I could lead a cult. I don't think oh. I could fall into a cult. Now, I totally agree with that because one of the, the telltale marks of a cult is that their leader is basically a narcissist. Everything is about them. Well, They're you. smarter than everybody else. They, they are, have a much, uh, like one of the things that they, they talk about is their interpretation of a Bible or the gospel is, is better than everybody else's. No one else understands the Bible like they do. You know, I'm the only one that, that can, you know, fully understand. And I have to tell you how to, look at the Bible because however you were looking at it before is wrong and I'm well, the one that's right. Well, first off, I think, thank you for calling me a narcissist. I'm not sure that's what I meant when I said I could lead a cult, but okay. Um, 
we just had a, 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 a profound moment here on Liquid Carnage. Uh, I don't think I could ever actually join a cult because I, people who join cults are looking for something that they and they don't know what they're looking for. They just kind of fall into it and they gravitate towards someone who's very charismatic, who can speak to a subject uh, very um, astutely and very creatively and in a way that draws people to to them. And I think that's that's the that, that's what brings people in. Uh, you see a lot of this happen in, in uh, marketing schemes and, and pyramid schemes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see I mean, that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's always. I, I remember very distinctly a lot of people in, uh, throughout our lives that have tried to lure us into their multi-level marketing, which is essentially it's, it's a cult, but it's a sales cult. So it's not not the same, but it is. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, one of the te- um, one of the characteristics. Yeah, okay. So let me start by apologizing. I'm not saying you're a narcissist, but I am saying that you're charismatic and that you can convince people of things that may or may not be true just because of the way you sell yourself. Yes. Um. Uh. So yeah, leaving a cult in that gr- with regard, you know, I, I could see that. Um, one of the characteristics uh, that they do talk about too is when you get into when you first introduce yourself to the cult, you have immediate friends that ingratiate you without knowing anything about you and say, Oh, we love you. You're part of our family now. And they like instantly, you know, take you in mm-hmm. um, that. Okay. Be on the lookout. Cause that could be the start of a cult. Yeah, absolutely. Because they're, they're basically, they're, they're um, looking for people to join. And so they put on the good front um, until they got you hooked in. And then, you know, then they move on to the next person. You know, and that's the funny thing about cults is that there's a lot. There's a lot of, I, I guess, people conceive, or, or, or conceive, perceive, cults very differently. Some some would call every religion a cult. Some would call uh, the pyramid schemes a cult. And then you have those that just consider your your everyday basic cult a cult. And those are the ones that sacrifice themselves in a room wearing the same clothes to a to get themselves on a spaceship that's taking them to their new home planet. Well, and, and so let's look at that one. So um, the the one where Heaven's Gate, Heaven's Gate, Heaven's Gate. That was the one that 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 I was thinking about. The guy had, a, a, um, you know, a view of the world that, you know, everyone else was totally idiots on. He was the only one that actually saw the truth. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, he was the only one that could lead them to the true heaven, because, you know, without him, they would be lost souls, lost sheep. Um, and, um, and I thought to myself, I, I would look at that guy and immediately think there's something wrong with him. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't even think that that would even be a possibility. So I don't think I could be in a cult, um, per se, but I, I, I wonder if, if, if when you're, if you're lonely or if you're low on hope or you don't have kind of, you know, you're looking for someone to feel, to belong. Those are the that people that they you, prey on. Those yeah, are... if, if you're more susceptible to a cult because they give you that immediate, you're part of a family, you know, you belong, you, you're you part of something special, and, you know, those, and they feed on that. Those are the people that, those the, that's like the base of a pyramid for cults. Those people are the ones that they can rely on, that they can convince to join, and that, you know, follow them dutifully. Uh, do you remember years ago when we had that cult running around Kingman? Um, trying to help everybody be a part of everything and and they were a cleaning business and then you know it all came out like what happened back in ohio when they moved out here yeah okay i remember the people and i do remember that it seemed very odd because we would see them in meetings and there would be the two of them and then a bunch of people just kind of you know like fall behind them and those people would stay and when they talk to you they talk to you like they're aliens because they're all very weird folks very nice, but all very weird people that wanted you to come to their meetings, wanted you to come see what they were all about. And that was very weird, you know, but, you know, those are the people that make up the base of a cult because they're the ones that are not because they've been taken in and they're so happy that they finally have something. They just want to share it to anyone that wants to listen. And they hope that they can find people that are in the same position as they are to bring them along and, and have them join the same group. Uh, someone like yourself would be, the Moby Dick of a cult. Oh, 
boy, you know, and, and that's one thing I will say, and I don't you're probably in the same boat. If I if I ever found a cult that was strong enough to turn me over, boy, yeah. they they they're a good cult because they yeah. they they did really good work to get me because I'm I'm like I'm a cynic. I think you yeah. know I think oh, that's yeah. the other thing is I I'm a cynic. You know, like like I, I'm not a religious person, okay? And I'm sorry, I, I, don't get me wrong. I would not like if I went to church, I would pray, I would I would pay alms. You know, I, I, it's not like I just, I'm an, um, an atheist, Yeah. but I'm not, a, I'm not a practicing religious person. I do yeah. believe in something. I'm not sure what I believe in, but the one thing that I will say is that I have not met a charismatic, um, pastor or, you know, someone who has convinced me that their way of thinking is the only way of thinking that anyone should have and that I should follow that person. You know, I, so I'm I very see, cynical of people yeah. because I'm thinking, well, what do you know that's better than anybody else? <laughs> and, and, <laughs> you know? and, I'm right, and I'm right there with you. I, I see someone like that. That's my first thought. I was like, mm, what are you trying to prove? Why are you, you know, what is the, what is this really about? What are you trying to, to get people to do here? Like what, what's the, why, you know? Yeah. Well, and you know, the other thing I think about is not even in, there's non-religious people that I wonder, is that a cult? Like the, the millions and millions and millions of people who um, wait on bated breath for what Elon Musk has to say. Yeah. Like to me, it's like, I, I, I don't get it. I mean, yes, he's a successful person. He's wealthy. I mean, don't get me wrong. He seems like, a, you know, he's capable in business. But there are some people that live and breathe and act on what Elon Musk has to say. Yeah, you know, the, the one that interests me, though, it's it's Scientology. Because if, if you pay attention now, they're, they're trying to rebrand themselves. They're, they're, they're putting out commercials showing how they're community-minded and community-oriented. And they're trying to help the planet. So they're trying to change the narrative on what they are. Because there's a lot of bad press on Scientology and the playoff game last week with the Buccaneers and Cowboys, uh, they cut to a shot of one of the, one of the suites in the stadium had Hulk Hogan, uh, and Tom Cruise in the same suite. Oh, and a few days later it came out that that was a Scientology suite. And one of Hulk Hogan's buddies was a a Scientologist trying to recruit him. And that's why Tom Cruise was there because he's a high level, uh, celebrity recruiter and Hulk Hogan would be someone they'd want in their, uh, in their their church, not cults, but you know, you know, what I'm saying, yeah, and and you know, I think that's 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 the part that I, I I do struggle with is because I am totally for anyone who is looking for finding that meaning in their life that makes life worth living and helping people or being a good person. If that's through religion, I am all for it. And please, please, you know, I'm this is not an anti religion. No, not at all. At no. all. This is not an anti-religion discussion. Um, so, like Scientology, I've always wondered. To me, it's a very weird religion. It, 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 it's just, it's very strange to me. Their, you know, the way that they practice their religion, um, and considering the biggest, I'm one of Tom Cruise's biggest fans. Mm. It's always been a ding for me that he's a Scientologist. I shouldn't care. You believe yeah. whatever you want. But it just seems kind of weird. It's one of those religions that I've always kind of had a thing in my head about. And it's stupid, but it is what it is. Um, but on the same side, um, I think where I get a little uh, cynical is that a lot of these cults that base themselves on one person's um, understanding of the Bible and one person's understanding of religion, I find that they do a lot of weird practices that in my opinion, those aren't, those aren't religiously sound activities. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like those aren't things that you'd like a person under a normal religion would say, you know what, that that's against what the teachings of the Bible are. Yeah. And you know, I, I think that's one of the, that's one of the, 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 the beautiful things about when you talk about the Bible or, and one of the big knocks in the Bible, it's all interpretational. That's why you have so many versions of Christianity. It's because the Bible itself is interpretational. It's what you take out of those stories and, and how you put them out to the world is what makes 
you know, Catholicism different from Episcopalianism or Presbyterianism or Baptism, you know, Baptist. It's 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 all based on perception and, and the way those stories are told and interpreted. And and cults can take a lot of those those stories and twist them to meet their own needs too, which is what we have in, in uh, a lot of these cases today. Like one of the cynicisms, cynicisms I had with the Catholic Church, because my mom was was baptized and raised Catholic. And one of the things that I, I just it just turned me off of the Catholic Church was, you know, um, I'm not a religious person, yet I know it's it is not right and it would not be a Bible teaching to molest a little boy. Yeah. You're a priest who is the the authority and the living embodiment of what the religion is based on and you don't understand that that's a a behavior that's not within the teachings of the bible yeah well well then if if i'm a non-believer and i understand it and you're a believer and don't understand it then why would i put any faith in you you know so i Mm -hmm. had this mental block a lot of people don't a lot oh, of yeah. people, yeah. a lot of people, you know, they, they, they are willing to say, Hey, look, they're the authority. They're going to teach me how to, to understand God and, and understand my relationship with God. So I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Um, I, I just wonder what happens to some of these people who belong to a cult when they ultimately come out of it and realize, wow, what they were doing was totally against the teachings of the Bible or the, teachings of the religion that they were in. Those are often guests you find on daytime talk shows. Yeah, they probably are. Like, I mean, like, uh, you know, Warren Jeffs obviously is, yeah. is, is big in our area. And, you know, there's a lot of women, young women who escaped from the FLDS. And, you know, and of course, the religion, I don't know if you can consider it a cult, but you can definitely consider it something that is not in the best interest of the, the followers who are following them, yeah. uh, you know, so. Well, yeah, yeah, that's that's a, that's that's a subsect of of the Mormon religion with the fundamentalists, and that's a whole different ballgame altogether. But as we wrap up today's show, uh, since we got off on a tangent on Vegas, we're just barely scratching the surface of this cult uh, cult discussion. Um, if is there a cult in your area that's always kind of made you laugh and chuckle because nobody realizes that uh, they are what they are, or is it a is it a pyramid scheme? What do you think? We want to hear about it. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, all at Liquid Carnage. Uh, if you have any ways to avoid a cult and want to tip off our EP for future reference, hit him up on Twitter and the Instagram at liquid underscore EP. You know, I would love our listeners too. If you have something that you have become obsessed about over the last, you know, over the brief history, the last, you know, few weeks or few months that you'd like to discuss on the podcast or would like us to discuss, send us that information too, because I, I find it fascinating when I get on a topic. And I don't know why. It's kind of like a kick, like when you say, oh, man, I just, I've just been needing to eat banana cream pie for the last three weeks. I don't know why I, mm-hmm. or whatever. So if anyone has any ideas of stuff that they've been obsessing about, um, I'd love to discuss that stuff too. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I agree. So that being said, Jason, take us home. Hey, thanks everyone for listening. We always appreciate you and love you guys. That was Scott. I'm Jason. And as always, if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid carnage. <laughs>